Hi, everyone. Welcome to I Would Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina. In today's podcast episode, we're going to be discussing the new year and how that brings new design goals for anyone who's in the business or thinking about starting into the event design business. Now, first, let's take a moment to recap everything 2023. There's been many moments of happiness. There's been triumphs. There's also been challenges. But nonetheless, those are all important when you are in this business. And we have to really take a moment to appreciate every single one of them. And as those moments that have been setbacks, you want to think about where can I improve for the new year for your business? What are some changes I can make? And what are the opportunities that are waiting for me to even grow to a new extent in my business? And I'm going to discuss all of that today. So first, let's discuss a little bit about the hiccups and hurdles that event world brings, or I should say the event business brings. The unexpected twists and turns, especially when it comes to handling them. In your business, what has been one of the most challenging moments or even component? For example, maybe it was dealing with client relations. Maybe it was budgeting or possibly it could have even been, you know, being sure about the design you were creating, like maybe some designs you loved and some you didn't. So I want you to think about all those things and how you overcame them. Like what were your solutions to these problems you felt that you went through? We all go through that, especially in event design. Now, when it comes to, let's say, dealing with your business, right? Let's say that you struggled a lot with budgeting. How can you, for the new year, take on a new approach? Think about what was it in budgeting that you lacked? Was it the fact that you were not good at following up with clients when it came to invoicing them? Was it the fact that maybe you underpriced? It is very important to find a structure that works for your business. And maybe you want to think about doing packages for the new year, how you can package themes and concepts into your actual business. So it facilitates the process with the client as well. It's important to clearly communicate with your clients and use contracts and make sure that all those things that you struggled with in this 2023 year, you adapt and, you know, make edits into your contracts so you're able to overcome those things like overtime or restyling fees. You want to think about all the possibilities of adding these new little kind of like notations to the contract so it makes it a smoother process for you and you feel more confident when you are working with your clients. So for those of you that maybe struggle with designs, you know, the designs that you didn't like, find in that design what you didn't like. Was it something that you felt was challenging? It's very important that when you are doing these designs and you do come with challenges, you arise to them and remember that this is your moment to kind of test your options and boundaries when it comes to design. Because the beautiful thing about design is that you are constantly going to be pushed into new directions. And that's what's going to make you even a better designer and someone that's just more versatile versus just doing one design all the same time the same. Another thing when you are designing, it might be challenging to work with trends especially with so many different trends that took over 2023 with technology advances or even different colors, finishes, and patterns. In 2024, rise to that challenge of actually executing some of those designs by incorporating those elements that you're not as comfortable with. Staying up to date and on trend is crucial to design, especially now to, you know, clients viewing everything online, like they're on Pinterest, or they're on Google, or they're even on Instagram. Use those different, you know, designs that maybe you're not as comfortable working in and do practice runs. There's nothing wrong with doing mock-ups. Even if it's not doing it for a client specifically, it's a good way to practice is by doing these different mock-ups and, you know, staying up to date with the trends. Know what fabrics are out, know what colors, textures, you know, what type of centerpiece is being used, what type of candles are appropriate for that candelabra, and the list can go on and on. And that's why I love Event Decor Direct, which is your one-stop shop to elevate all of your events. They have all of the latest products, and we have an exclusive offer for all of you listeners and viewers of I Would Uncut. 
and you get a 10% off discount code on your purchase at eventdecordirect.com. All you have to do is use the code IWED on cut 10, I W E D U N C U T 10 at checkout, and you will see that your products and even your flexibility and your you know inventory is going to grow and you're going to have the best to offer for 2024 in all those beautiful events you're going to be designing. So again, make sure to check out eventacordirect.com, who is our sponsor for the podcast. So make sure to check them out. Another thing you might struggle with is being efficient with operations and adaptability. The challenge might be time management or like even vendor coordination and just being able to adapt with the different industry vendors that are out there. A solution would be is to create a detailed timeline to kind of delegate tasks and also build stronger vendor relationships by networking and building upon that, you know, industry of like who's who, you know, putting yourself out there, making more friendships and connections. And that way you're able to also have more freedom in using different vendors because sometimes we stick to what we know. And I know for a fact, when I first started, I wanted to stay with just the people that I knew. And I realized that I wasn't growing. And when you're not growing as a designer, you feel kind of stagnant. And it's very important that you push yourself outside of that. And it might sound scary or might sound a little bit like, oh, my God, I have to put myself out there. But it's so important because you going to trade shows or even, you know, vendor networking events, it's beneficial to you at the end of the day. You're putting your name out there. You're building friendships and you're also getting more knowledge of, you know, what is happening in the industry. Like what is the latest in, you know, the audiovisual industry? What is the latest in catering? These are all important factors when you are a designer to know about these things. So make sure to start, you know, in 2024, going to more events and staying more busy in that sense as well, because as you're working and building your business, you can't just focus on clients as well. You have to think about it this way. You have to build on growing your business with clients, but also build your business and getting vendors. So in the new year, there are many things that maybe you want to think about of tackling and putting into play when it comes to 2024. That's why it's so important to think about what were some of the things I did great in 2023? What are some of the, you know, challenges I had? What were some of the problems? Like, what were some of the surveys that I, you know, got back from clients? What were they saying? If you don't look at the things that you can grow on and, you know, improve, then you fall into a way of almost jeopardizing your business. That's what helps us grow and learn is the fact that getting those client surveys or, you know, if you put up a backdrop and it ends up falling, collapsing, and hopefully no one got hurt. Uh, but let's say that, you know, you learn that maybe you can't use that hardware or you need, uh, you know, more weight on the base plates when you are going up higher. This is what I mean. You want to take kind of like a self analysis report of your business and say, what are all the things I'm doing wrong and how can I make them better for the new year? And with that being said, also be someone who celebrates all your wins. Like think about all the things that you did amazing that, you know, whether it was you booked more clients this year, this year than ever before, you're more confident in your designs. These are all things you want to celebrate and also just highlight on. So for 2024, what I want you all to do is think about what your goals are. So think about what are my 2024 business goals? It's not, you know, the new year, new me, it's more like new year, new business, uh, new opportunities to grow. And how can I, you know, just elevate my business to new extent and, you know, grow upon what I already have established. So think about first, what do you want to accomplish in the first three to six months? Like, what are your short term goals? Whether it's maybe revamping website, like I know many designers that are kind of rebranding, especially, you know, with the trends and everything changing, they're finding more of their voice in the industry. So maybe it's a revamp that you want to do for 2024. Maybe it's just putting yourself out there more that you're done being introverted and shy, and you're ready to take a challenge and go out there with, you know, your business cards and just start making connections. 
Uh, maybe it could be something like even getting new inventory. You know, you feel like the inventory you have is the same always and you wanted to do something new. So getting new inventory, doing new mock-ups and setups, and then showing it on your social media handles is a great way to grow your business as well. You know, showcasing it on the social platforms. So these are all things you want to consider. And remember that any setback you have is always just a stepping stone to progressing and moving forward and building a better and brighter future for your business. Another key factor as being a business owner entails is being positive in your mindset when you are navigating through the business hurdles and the setbacks, which is extremely important is instead of, you know, kind of crumbling under pressure, think about all the positive outlooks and how you can overcome that. Like, let's say that you didn't make enough money from that event, Like a great example is the first time I ever charged a client, I was so excited. I thought I had charged just enough. And what I failed to realize was I didn't really charge enough because once I paid staff, like the extra assistance I had, once I paid also some of the different vendors I had used, and once I had to, you know, set money aside for taxes, I realized I really didn't make much. And that was a big lesson and also a loss at that moment because I really stayed with, I think I'm once everything I cleared, you know, paid everyone. I think I had like $40 left and it's so embarrassing to even say it, but I remember that was my first event ever. I didn't know how to charge or how to price. I was just so excited to get business. And that's something that in that moment I felt like, oh my God, I, maybe I'm not cut out for this business. What am I doing? If I don't even know how to charge, I don't even know how to make money. Like, what am I doing? Because again, I love the creative side and the business side is something I struggled with at the beginning that I learned from that. And as I was down and out, I was like, no, I need to continue. I need to just get better. I need to learn more about numbers. I need to know more about the target market and things like that. So I don't repeat that same mistake. And that's what I mean by staying positive is not letting yourself just get like all that negative self-talk get to you, which is so easy to do because again, that moment I'm like, what am I doing? If I can't even make money out of this, maybe I'm not in the right industry. I'll never forget I said that to myself. And then I caught myself at the same time because I'm like, no, I love this. Like I live and breathe this. Like this is a life I love, but oh my God, I'm not making money. And I didn't know how to charge right. And there was just so many different factors involved in that. So again, staying positive. So from that, you know, lesson, which is what I like to call it now, is find what, you know, price you to charge. Like, see what the design is worth. Like, time yourself. That's a big thing I learned as well, that as a designer, you have to time yourself for how long it takes you to do that design. So I know how much I'm able to charge. Also, like, how much work is involved in that installation? Do you need extra assistance? And how much are you going to pay your assistant? Like, you know, how much are you going to pay them? And then also you remember you have to also feed them and how many hours are you going to do it hourly? You're going to give them just like a full price kind of payment of just for the day. These are things you want to consider. And other situations have happened like that where, Once I was designing as well, it was really my first time using hardware and it was using drapes. And I remember that it was a three panel design and it was just rod pocketed technique. Like that's all it was. It wasn't anything too crazy. And like I said, this was at the beginning. And one of the main things that happened was I wanted to be cute at the setup. And one thing I realized is Never, ever make a consultation appointment the same day you're doing a setup because you're going to dress comfortably when you're setting up. The way we look when we're setting up is not the same how we look when we're going to consultations to meet with clients. So that day I had a morning setup and I was all dressed up, excited. I was doing the backdrop again, using the hardware, kind of getting familiar with it. I wasn't a pro yet. And I literally got tangled in the fabric and it collapsed. And was that embarrassing? 
beyond embarrassing. I was so embarrassed and I literally fell to the floor laughing at myself because I wanted to cry, but I'm like, I'm not going to let these other vendors see me cry. I'm just going to laugh it off. And I got back up and I just started finishing the design and I realized I'm like, never again will I wear heels to a setup, first of all. And second of all, never do a consultation on the same day as a design because I'm not in that, you know, business presentation attire that I should be. So that's what I mean by just have that positive mindset to everything because there's so many things that are going to happen to you as a business owner with even, you know, just regular day-to-day things like answering the phone, having the right email, having the right business card. List out all these things that you want to improve and that way you'll be able to tackle them one by one, but don't become someone fixated and overwhelmed by it. Like, Learn from these things, make a list and be proactive with your list. I always say if you have a list of 10 different things that you need to achieve, don't think you're going to achieve them in a day. Break it down into measurable, like actionable like sections. So take like three goals you have for work this month, then take the next three and so forth and so on. Don't try to tackle it like all together and then become overwhelmed and not tackle any of it. So think about that as well. Also, practice as staying relevant in the dynamic event industry. Social media is here to stay and social media is only going to keep growing. So get comfortable with publishing content, you know, following up with clients. So many people now will like a photo and then DM the designer and say, hey, how much is it for this design and so forth? Be someone proactive. Don't, you know, the worst thing that I always see online is if I send, let's say, someone a DM and they don't respond within like two days and, you know, a month later passes and they still haven't responded, that is not good for business. Be very proactive and stay on top of, you know, the industry and relevant. Keep publishing photos. There's nothing wrong with publishing even inspo photos, behind the scenes, setup photos or even photos of you going to, you know, look at fabric or flowers or even, you know, different products you want to bring into your company. Don't like, just don't be someone that is like ghost on social media. Use that to your advantage. Social media is here to stay and it's only going to get even more, I would say, interactive in the sense that People are really focusing on what they see online. It's like a portfolio. So continue that path of staying up to date, publishing photos, even if let's say it's your down season. That's not a problem. Publish photos that you do mock-ups and setups at home or even like a nice tablescape or a balloon art or a beautiful floral centerpiece with some draped background that's just like for a little photo shoot. Do little things like that, but stay very active. And again, don't let, let's say slow business or even your slow season slow you down continue because remember people are constantly getting married they're constantly celebrating whether it's a gender reveal a baby shower so there's always room for business and for you to grow so in 2024 let's develop a flexible mindset to adapt to unexpected changes that our businesses bring and remember to embrace setbacks as detours always lead to greater outcomes in the end Thank you so much to all of you that have watched this episode and are listening. I appreciate it so much. And I want to wish you all a happy holiday season and a happy new year. And remember to stay creative and motivated and see you all in 2024.